My name is Haypin Im, and uh, I serve as president of a nonprofit, Korean Churches for Community Development, soon to be FACE, Faith and Community Empowerment. I remember I was an MBA student at USC, and I was doing an internship uh, in Irvine. But like literally, uh, so a few days I will be down in Irvine, but in the evenings, um, Koreatown was my playground as a young single female. And um, when I came home and turned on the news and heard and saw how Koreans were being depicted and how Koreatown was being destroyed, in particular, it was very surreal uh, it felt like a war zone in which I felt very scared to enter into that space when literally like the night before, a few nights before, uh, my friends and I were there um, having meetings and maybe you know going out to dinner, uh, etc. Uh, but more important than that, um, I remember feeling this, um, I don't know if the word desperate desire, but Someone who, of, someone who could represent our community. And the way that our community was depicted was in such a negative light. And in my heart, I knew that there was more to our community than the way that we were being portrayed. Here we were, out of the billion dollars in property damage uh, that occurred in LA riots alone, over 40% were incurred by Koreans. And so in that way, we were victims, but the way we were being portrayed, we were looked upon, portrayed as aggressors or perpetrators. And even though we were kicked down and crying, um, we were crying alone and there weren't others to cry with us. So actually when the riots occurred, our organization for many, many years later, but over the years, um, because of the pain of the LA riots, it was something that I was seeking and searching. Um, I, you know, one area that I got very involved was KAC, and eventually I became president of the organization. Um, and so in that way, you know, I got to know a lot of elected officials, um, got to see how the community works with the broader community. But it was really that crystallization when I connected with the first Amy Church model that I could bring my faith, my heart for the community, and also the pain of the LA riots, and my desire to really um, see our community uh, be full participants in American dream and American society, like all come together. The LA riots occurred, and eventually I also got to then be active in the African American church. And in many ways, the leaders uh, from that community became my mentors, supporters, um, and I'm very grateful again for, for their leadership and support. And at the same time, um, there was this one area that where I could clearly see that we didn't see eye to eye. These are people that I respected and I knew that they were good people. And so it was kind of a question, for, question mark for me. Why? Why would these people feel okay to say these hate-filled messages that were so hurtful and painful to me and to the Korean community? One was very recent even. Uh, this was during the whole um, uh, protest uh, of police brutality against uh, particularly black men. And with those protests, you know, Ferguson came out and Baltimore came out in terms of the riots and protests. And the casualty were the Asian store owners. In Ferguson, it actually turned out to be more South Asian. In Baltimore, it was more Korean slash Chinese owners. And I, I recall that the Depart U.S. Department of Just Justice uh, convened uh, the Korean representatives including store owners and then leaders from the black community. And although I did not participate uh, personally, uh, I was told what happened. So here the store owners and leaders were sharing about the loss that they incurred, including their livelihoods and, and their American dream. And you know, in most cases when someone shares that kind of loss, the normal response will be of empathy and sympathy and you know, even um, offers for help. Um, but I was told that the leaders from the black community, uh, instead of like acknowledging and perhaps empathizing, uh, their response was, you need to give more to back to the black community. And I also remember in another context where 
you know, um, when I shared about the loss, you know, of the 40% of the billion dollars in proper damage, what I heard was that, um, you know, that the store owners basically burned their own stores to get insurance money. And you know what? Maybe out of the 2,000 plus store owners uh, that did lose their business, maybe some did <laughs> do that for insurance money. I'm doubtful, but maybe, maybe there could have been. But I know that for the most part, the majority, that was not true. And so again, that um, kind of you know, comments were very painful. And other rumors that these store owners are um, you know, coming to target and exploit uh, the business and that they don't belong there. Um, and that um, also that they're getting special loans, government loans, um, and in that way they were stealing these opportunities uh, from the black community. I read a posting uh, of an article that's someone saying uh, from the black community, there's something terribly wrong about America. Why are all these store owners' name is Lee and you know Kim or <laughs> Park, uh, which makes it sound like that you know anyone that sounds Asian shouldn't be a store owner, that they don't belong there when, especially they're working 16-hour days. Um, so pretty much they're as much part of the community as anyone else uh, who's there. You know, some of the comments that I mentioned, um, I heard directly from leaders, enlightened leaders um, from the black community. Um, I remember in this one, I was at the White House uh, Easter prayer breakfast, and there was about 100 of us that were invited, and I was sitting next to a pastor from the Dallas area. And in that this, um, area, there was this um, conflict between a gas station uh, Korean um, employee uh, with a black customer and basically there was a lot of misunderstanding and uh, the Black Panthers and uh, the local NAACP were out there protesting against uh, the owner and the Black Panthers their statement on their website was to shut out all the Asian owned store owners across America <laughs> um, at least in the inner cities um, as well and um, and I remember saying, you know, Pastor, you know, are you involved in any of that discussion or efforts? He said that he was pretty much uh, not in town and had missed that, but that there was this local uh, hair wig store. He had asked the store owner to come to his church to have a discussion. And I guess that discussion turned out, you know, pretty well. And so they were able to attain peace. Um, and then I did ask him, at the same time, you know, are you aware, you know, I kn that there's, are there other business owners, you know, have the big businesses moved in to places where maybe, you know, what, you know, where these stores have been burned down or kicked out? And pretty much he said no, right? And I mentioned that, did you know that these store owners, especially like in um, LA, uh, even now, uh, Koreans have the lowest home ownership rate. They have one of the lowest uh, assets. Uh, liquid assets that any community um, and so in that way these store owners when they save their little bit of money <laughs> you know where they can buy their store is pretty much limited to places that will not be as expensive and that happens to be inner city so it's more of survival and default um, and so they're there 16 hours it's not a matter of targeting but they're pretty much in the same place and I remember him saying so I guess we're all stuck together here, you know, we're all kind of in that same economic, structural, challenging environment. And we're all trying to survive. And if we see each other as enemies, um, then I feel like it's, some, it's literally uh, like yelling at someone who's in a wheelchair and telling them to jump or, you know, whatever. It, you know, that person is very much stuck there and really don't have options. <laughs> so yelling at them really is not going to advance things, right? But to recognize that they're in a wheelchair and if you need them to jump or move, perhaps finding a different solution, whether it's putting a ramp or throwing them over your shoulder. But the nature of that conversation would change significantly knowing that they're in a wheelchair. And I think, again, for all of us, uh, many of us, especially communities of color, but particularly with the Korean community and the black community, we're in that same economic wheelchair. And if we see that we're on the same team, then I think the nature of that conversation would change. And I think we will get 
more quickly and sooner to finding solutions that will pull all of us out uh, versus yelling at each other that really will not take anything uh, to the next step. I think one thing that really sucks for the Asian community, in particular the Korean community, is the model minority myth. Uh, there's this perception that all Asians are doing so well, um, and so then these store owners are, are doing so well. Uh, but the reality is they're working 16-hour days and working seven days a week. And you know, if they really did have options, if they really had all that money, uh, I'm very doubtful that they'd be working those kind of hours um, and really not taking any vacations. And so the model minority myth, I think, um, really also then tends to create divisiveness uh, between communities of color uh, in that they perceive that Asians are doing so well when actually they're also struggling, uh, whether it's mental health, health risks, uh, discrimination, home ownership, uh, you know, you name it. They're going through those challenges, but that model minority myth masks those pains. And so then it breeds also then uh, resentment from other communities uh, because it pits our community against other communities. You know, the 10th anniversary of the LA riots, I was curious to see how our community would be depicted. And I saw President uh, George W. Bush come into town and he bypassed Koreatown. And uh, he visited, uh, actually it was First Amy Church, and I heard that um, the comment about the Korean community was like a <laughs> you know, bleep in, in terms of the whole uh, presentation. And I remember telling myself in my heart that for the 20th, you know, I would do whatever I can to make sure that our story would be properly told. So for the 20th, and which is also the goal of the 25th, I have two goals. Uh, one is that the Korean American narrative would have its proper place in history. Not more, not less, not demonized, not marginalized. In that space around Korean slash Asian uh, owned store owners, a Korean slash Asian owned stores um, with the black client or customer, that narrative, because of the uh, rumors based on misinformation, about what the reality of these store owners are and the model minority myth, that's one area that becomes contentious and explosive at any given moment. And so, you know, one of the desire is that we want to create bridges of understanding. Hey, look at this data point. We're in the same situation. How can we work together? We're on the same team. Right now, this political environment, um, I feel like our country is going backwards. There are a lot of communities who are, who are currently or will be victims. And if you think about the LA riots, one common theme is that we became victims of a situation where government failed to act responsibly and media played a big role in terms of flaming the fires. And right now, with whether it's the, the ban, travel ban, or the deportations, or just misogyny. Again, it's pitting people against one another, uh, inciting fear, uh, because government is failing to act responsibly, and they're using force in an irresponsible way. And so for really the 25th anniversary, we have the big arching thing, rebuilding the American dream together. Our hope uh, through this campaign, Saigu, which stands for April 29th, 429, the day that the riots broke, we took an ugly word, an ugly moment, uh, turned it into an acronym, which stands for serve, advocate, inspire, give, and unite. We want to use and leverage the 25th anniversary of the LA riots as a catalyst to unite our voices, unite our strength, unite communities, so that uh, we can achieve the best of what America was intended to be. My name is Hei Pinim, and this is my Saigu story. Mm -hmm.